Well, if you have a problem and you don't know where to go, just dial up the internet and listen to the show. Tune in to Dr. Evers, she'll lift your spirits high. Her affirmations lead you from the darkness to the light. Say thank you, thank you, thank you, believe with all your soul. When properly done, they always work with you, you know. Oh, just say an affirmation. Love, health, and abundance beginning to show. Oh, just say an affirmation. Show your gratitude and the blessings will flow. Oh, just say an affirmation. Love, health, and abundance beginning to show. Oh, just say an affirmation. Show your gratitude and the blessings will flow. Welcome to the Dr. Anne Marie Ever Show, where dreams really can and do come true. And welcome to the home of affirmations, uh, positive thinking, forgiveness, mind power, thoughts, creative visualization, and much, much more. And uh, today we have a very special guest on, jo- Johnny Enoch. And uh, he's been on a couple times before, but I know you re- you really love the information he's sharing. And um, he's a well-known um, hip, so hip, a hypnotherapist and sought-after lecturer, writer, author, researcher for 20 years. And he's a popular TV personality and much more. And I want to, maybe you should like to grab a pen and, and a paper and just make some notes while we're talking because... There's always important information that Johnny shares freely with us, and some of which may be new to you. So it's important to keep an open mind and take the information that is relevant to you and your beliefs. So with no further ado, I want to say welcome to the show, Johnny Enoch. How are you doing today? I'm good, Anne. Thanks for having me back on your wonderful show. Well, I'm so glad you're here, and you've got so much to share with people, don't you? I mean, you're always uh, doing something different, and I know many people are contacting me for ideas and plans and ways to cope these days with what's going on in the world with everything, and um, so I was wondering if um, if somebody trying to phone, I was wondering, just just don't worry, um, so I was wondering if we could have some thoughts along that line that we could talk about, uh, Johnny. Of course. And, you know, it's sort of synchronistic that the chimes in the background that are <laughs> ringing from your phone. It's the universe calling and telling us, really, that we're all being called. We're all getting this wake-up call right now to look around us and to start asking, why are we really here? Yeah. And who are, are we? <laughs> who, oh, no, yeah, exactly. Who are you? Yeah. Who are Any of us, we really got to take this moment out now in the world as we've all had a pause to really look at who we are. That's the greatest mystery of all. You know, we we spend most of our lives when we're young children and and when we get older, we spend most of our lives dreaming, sleeping. But is this state right now that we're all in of dreamless, sleepless wakefulness, is it any more important than that state? You know, where where are we really situated? And we might look at our lives uh, as these great experiences that we're all having as we're going through the world and we see these different transformations and changes. And that's where I think the really exciting part about having a spiritual understanding of consciousness goes. You know, and, and, and this is something that I've looked at not only with clinical hypnotherapy, but the, the further I go down the rabbit hole, and bring people with me onto these great adventures around the world, looking at megalithic structures, looking at the Great Pyramid of Giza, or the the countless other pyramids we have around the world, and ancient temples and symbols that we get lost in, this ancient language of symbolism or sacred geometry, the flower of life, these ever-changing patterns of Fibonacci sequences and 
strange connections in the body and in the world, we can look at this greater intricate pattern, this blueprint of existence of why we are all here. And, you know, we start to unravel these mysteries that actually there is a very complex algorithm of our reality and that our reality that we're all experiencing right now is relative to the future and is relative to the past. So one of the greatest illusions I think that I've, I've uncovered, especially when looking at people's uh, hypnosis or when I look at these ancient civilizations and what they knew, what our ancient religions tell us, is that your consciousness that you have right now, when you were born, and this is something that your guest that you have on regularly, Garnet Schulhaus, such a fantastic guest, what he talks about in his experiences. But when you were born, your consciousness was imbued with your current realization of where you're at. It's sort of like a focal point. The brain is creating this illusion of linear space-time, that we're just moving forward and we're at this current position. This is our focal point. Imagine right now as you're talking to me and you're, you're, you're talking to me and looking at your screen and, you know, you, you got, you know, the, the switch here operating, a camera on the other end. You have your listeners right now, everybody listening, everybody tuning into this right now, this wonderful radio broadcast that you do. As you're listening to this right now, you might think that you're just this one, this one place that you're in, but that's just an illusion. Well, there's a fancier term for this. We call this, if you want to get scientific about this, we call this lineal subjugation. Huh? So the, yeah, so we want to look at this from this linear perspective. But actually, the exciting part about this is that the you, the and the the Anne that's listening to this right now, the Dr. Anne Marie Evers that's listening to this right now and, and having this conversation with me, is existing right now when you were eight years old. At the same point, you're existing in the future, even next week, you know, whatever you're doing, you're going out grocery shopping, you're moving around, you're maybe writing your next great manuscript, your next book that's coming out that everyone's going to enjoy. All right. So all of this is happening right now in simultaneity. It's all happening right now at the exact same time, except we just have this illusion that's being created through the mind and through consciousness. Now, the greatest part about all these mysteries and what we're looking at right now is that we have a real gift. What's happening in the world right now is we're going through growing pains. We have these challenges today and what's happening, but it's causing us to take a pause and to look at who we are and where we're headed and what a tremendous gift that is if you look at it that way. It sure is, and people are uh, quite a few people are very f afraid and have fear around it. So, uh, if we look at it, that it, it's all for a purpose that helps us get through things, doesn't it, Johnny? Everything has a purpose. Absolutely, there's a great mandala of life, and you know we have this great anagram of reality on how things are shifting and going in different directions, and you know this. This great transformation, this great shift that we're all going through, once we realize, just as Daniel Brinkley says, the great NDE survivor, he says that you're all a great, mighty, powerful spiritual being with dignity, direction, and purpose. Once you realize that, that's the greatest thing that we can, we can come, come to knowing. And to, the most important of those things sometimes is just having the idea and understanding that dignity – Having your dignity is so very important. If you've had something that's taken away your dignity, get it back and, and, and learn that you know you have this great worth and that you are loved beyond belief and that we're all so precious. And I think, again, uh, if you don't mind me saying, I think that's where your affirmations and what you teach people on the show is so very important, that they have the ability to create their reality, to shift the reality around them. Yes, and they do, don't they? Because what we think about, we bring about, don't we? We absolutely do. You know, not to get too sciencey for people out there, but if people want to go down the science wormhole of things, <laughs> you know, and we can. I mean, there's a lot of very interesting things about who we are and, you know, how fantastic we are. I don't know uh, if people are aware of this, but each and every single one of you watching this, I mean, this vehicle, this body that you have, Currently, you know, you're sharing it with something like, uh, you know, six to seven kilos of other organisms that are, you know, they're oscillating with your cells. They're living on your skin. They're living in your body and they're, they're working with you. I mean, you're not the only one sharing your vehicle. 
And, you know, that doesn't even count the six to 7,000 or seven to 8,000 other um, uh, energetic life forms that are vibrating with us and moving throughout our, our body and our existence. If you look at your body right now, and, and I mean, this is something everybody can come to the grips with. You have about 100 trillion trillion cells in your body. There's 100 trillion trillion atoms in a cell and 100 trillion trillion cells in an atom. Those atoms are made of mostly blank spaces. And, you know, proportionally speaking, there is more empty space inside of an atom than there is all of the space on Earth to fit some 500 million creatures. And believe me, there, there are microscopic, uh, you know, uh, intelligences that, that we talk about at the levels of nanobacteria and whatnot. Well, if we go down into your body right now, into these little tiny things inside of an atom, these little minute particles called atoms, everybody, that everybody's aware of, everybody went, that went to school out there is aware of an atom. You know, an atom, these, these things that we see have an electron whizzing around them, around the nucleus. Okay, so we talk about going down underneath them, these atoms, there's these things called subatomic particles that maybe some of the folks listening to your broadcast, maybe they've heard of subatomic particles. Well, in subatomic particles, we have these things called quarks and neutrinos and hadrons and leptons. Down below leptons, we have these little things now we call muons, M-U-O-N-S. Now, what's really interesting about this is that inside of one of these muons now, we believe in this, this virtual subspace of where we, we, we look at. We can literally store all the information of everything that will ever happen in this entire universe inside of one of these little muons. Okay? Inside of you, it is. And inside of your mitochondria in your body and inside of all the mitochondria of your cells and all the atoms that you're composed of, think about how powerful this statement is that inside each and every single one of you, you literally can unfold your own universe if you know how, and you can become the master of your own universe. That's just a little taste of how incredibly powerful each and every single one of you watching this is. And that just goes back to you again, and of what you've been empowering people and teaching them for so many years that they don't have to become the victim of circumstances or what they've gone through anymore. I mean, think about these affirmations, these spark words, right? Yeah, you've had some experience with them, haven't you? <laughs> Absolutely. I suggest everybody goes out and picks up these books by Dr. Anne-Marie Evers, especially on, especially on spark words. I mean, and that's so simple. It's very simple. Everybody, you know, it's one of the ones I did for the group uh, I was teaching and, but it works so well because you're just, you're just saying it. You can say it as you walk. You can say uh, wherever you are. It's just, I find it's great. And it's wonderful for looking for lost articles too. But I said, Together, because we put together, and then divine or miracle, and then your spark word, what you want to happen. So I was doing div together, divine, fine glasses. And, you know, I found five pairs of sunglasses. So I didn't want sunglasses. I wanted my reading glasses. So I went back and put reading glasses, because you need to be specific. You, you absolutely do. Now, when people think of, of these exercises, sometimes they have to overcomplicate things, but really... I think that it's even more powerful when you assert this with, you know, a simple statement. Less is more. So you say, you know, like you said, together divine, find glasses now. Uh, and, you know, you find these incredible, these incredible keywords, these shortcuts that sort of dynamically and powerfully bring things together. And we do something similar in hypnosis, by the way. We use these binding statements and certain anchor words. And it's all about simplifying it or bringing it into the most powerful equation. It's easy to say. It's easy to remember. You don't need this big, long diatribe. You can simply put it down almost like a keyword or a shortcut that you put on a computer. If people have used Windows or a desktop computer before, you'll see that you have these things called shortcuts on your desktop. And that shortcut will sometimes lead to a, a directory that has the program in it, and it will sort of bring the program up on your screen. Well, I think that's what I would equate these spark words with their little their little uh shortcuts are their they're like remote control buttons that go into the subconscious or the unconscious mind and unlock the limitless potential to take exactly what you want to create and put it into the grid now once it's in this grid of this reality this reality is very very powerful and responds to you because the universe is very plastic like that right yeah and you used it while you were driving too couldn't you because you can just say it as you're driving and and uh, parking spots and all these things, can't they, be used for 
I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, I've used it before many times with that. And that's the wonderful thing about these techniques. And that's how you know a technique is a, is a great one and how it's been inspired from the best places. If somebody has to overcomplicate things, let's say, you know, if it's so complicated that you can't understand it the first go, if you couldn't explain it in its simplest terms, to go back to how Einstein would talk about these things, uh, you know, if you can't explain it in the simplest terms, then, you know, we got to look at it in, in the way of how good is the technique really. But when you look at spark words, they're so beautiful. They're just, they work really, really well. And you've used it yourself so many times and helped so many people with their health, their jobs, their opportunities, whatever it is. And that's why I really admire where they fit into the quantum equation, into the mind and where we are right now in, in the, as a whole. It's so true. And, you know, people don't realize how powerful our mind really is, do they, sometimes? No, they don't. They don't realize how powerful the mind. But, you know, the mind makes a better servant than it does a master. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Because the mind can play tricks on you, too. And that's the thing. You have to keep the mind in check. And there's the famous theosophist, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. She once said that, that the mind is the great slayer of the real. So let the disciple slay the slayer, meaning that, you know, you have to keep the mind in check. And I think that's where these tools that have come in place, uh, these ancient tools that you learn about that, that all of our ancient philosophers and masters and sages and gurus and religions and teachings, even in the Bible or whatever you're looking in the, in the Hindu Vedic scriptures and Buddhism, Buddhism is filled with information about this, uh, uh, about how all that suffering comes from attachment and that how the mind is what's creating what we're going through and how what, if the same parts of the mind that create sadness can create happiness. You know, that's where we come into these ideas. That's so true. And with all the affirmations I teach, I always say to add what I call the safety clause, which is to the good of all parties concerned. Because, you know, when you do that, you, you don't get something. You're, it also works for the maker of the affirmation, doesn't it? Exactly. Exactly. That's that's exactly right. So, um, Johnny, what would you say to people now that um, are afraid that when they die? Or what happens when we die? I know um, a dear friend, uh, Garnet, has told us how, what he had experiences. And they're quite unique, aren't they? His experiences, too. And what would you say about that, Johnny? Well, first of all, nobody dies. Death is an illusion. It's simply just a transition point. And the reason I'm saying this is that I have spent countless hours interviewing people who have been near-death experience survivors. I have looked at this subject for its religious, its philosophical terms, and I've also worked with people doing clinical hypnotherapy and life between life regressions and looked at this from every perspective and angle, and I spend a great deal of time looking at the science of this. So what you have to understand if you're listening to this today is that we have a very good understanding of the brain and consciousness these days. And two of the people that have given us some great perspectives about this are Professor Stuart Hameroff over at the University of Arizona in Tucson, as well as Sir Roger Penrose, the famed British physicist. They've looked at our brain working with these things called microtubules. And this comes under a theory called quantum consciousness theory. So how this works is that your brain, it's kind of designed like a cockpit, and it's so well designed for these computational devices on how your consciousness works with it, is that your consciousness works with the brain through something we call anharmic vibrations. And so this anhar these anharmic vibrations, a lot of you might be listening to this going, well, what is, what is that? What is an anharmic vibration? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard Indian music before with the sitar? Have you ever heard that? Yes, I have. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Now, that's an anharmic vibration. Very interestingly enough, because if we go into the the, the ancient teachings of India the, and the, the Vedic scriptures and all these ideas, we seem to get a really profound understanding of consciousness and the mind and, you know, all these different aspects of how this works. So it's it's interesting. These folks have a type of music that we believe is connected to the the anharmic vibrations in the brain. Well, the brain is receiving this signal from somewhere. So we believe your your consciousness uh, and, and your perspective of how you're held here is through something called superpositioning. And it's all held together through something called quantum cohesion. 
Uh, a lot of people out there, and maybe you've heard this before, I've talked about something called quantum entanglement. Well, yeah. this, this, yeah, so this field of information, these atoms and everything that, that you're composed of, this, this beautiful energy that, who is you, that you are made of, let's just say the, the soul vehicle that is in your body. Uh, now, this, this soul is coming into your body, and it's occupying this space as your vehicle of perception. Now, this, this vehicle of perception today in our world, this is just one of the vehicle, uh, vehicles of perception, we'll just say, is available today. In the future, this might change of how our consciousness can interact with this physical world. We're now moving into a realm of understanding where we may very soon in the future have an understanding of how consciousness is received as this signal in the body. And there's very, very intelligent folks on this planet that are now trying to figure out ways on how that consciousness could be transferred, on how it could be downloaded, and how it can be exchanged, because we now know you have a signal. It's like a signal on a network. A guy like Cameron, who is running the switchboard of the show, and technical people out there might understand on a computer network, if you've ever set up your computer at home, you might understand that you have this thing that's like an IP address on a network. Well, you have a very unique signal. And in the very near future, this is how our communications, our quantum communications are going to work. But the interesting thing about this, this unique signal that you have, this is also an understanding now of what we have about our DNA. So before we get on to the, the idea of what happens after you die, which is the question that you just asked me, we have to think about these bodies that we have. If you've ever looked at DNA before, DNA has these double helixes. Now, when you look at these double helixes, you might notice that on each side, we have these coils wrapped around it, just like an antenna. And there's a distance, there's a distance that we have between them. We have this duplexing. And, and what we look at this with this aspect that you're receiving a signal that your DNA is like an antenna, your consciousness is a non-local awareness. You have an awareness. That's what it is. And so you're receiving that from somewhere. So at some point when your body can no longer take this signal, you're going to be released from this field. Now, you get a couple different perspectives. Everybody knows someone who's nearly died before. Many of you listening to this right now, maybe you've died before and you just didn't remember it because it didn't suit your experience. You're here as a school. You're here to grow and evolve, and sometimes it suits the purpose of our experience to remember what happened to us, to remember that we died and what we went through. But if you've ever talked to someone before and they've kind of almost died, sometimes they've had an experience where they said, well, they just floated above the, whole, the, the hospital room or they floated above the car accident for a while and they saw the paramedics, but they came back in their body. Okay? So the interesting thing about that is if – there is a chance that you're going to come back. Well, then you're not, you're not going to go beyond that. You're just going to have an out-of-body experience. Because as Garnet has so eloquently pointed out on your previous shows, as well as in his wonderful, wonderful books, Garnet Schulhauser's books, is that if there's a chance that you're going to die, let's say you're going to drown, or someone, something, something bad is going to happen to you, or whatever it is, before the point of suffering, most of the time you have an auto ejection uh, reaction. Your body will just spit you out, and you won't actually have the full pain of the impact. Not unless it suits your experience. For some people, there is a karmic aspect of appreciation of that pain to go through that, which releases something that they wanted to experience. And that's a complex subject. But for the most part, if something's going to happen to you, you'll leave the body before you have the pain or before the experience hits. So for the most part, we have that. And, and Sometimes we'll kick around, we'll stick around, and we'll observe something that's going on for us. But for the average person, what happens when you die is that you're going to take off out of here very quickly. You'll have either guides helping you or depending on how far along, how advanced you are in your spiritual progress. Okay, Because remember, your soul, the soul body that you have, and uh, that, by the way, the Egyptians had all kinds of names for this, the different levels and layers. We, we call it, we have like a spirit and we have a mind, we have a soul, we have all these layers like a Russian doll that you're composed of. It's very, very interesting, the unique 
multidimensional, etherical beings that we are. We're very beautiful, complex, impressive, powerful beings, all of us, every one of you listening to this. But the Egyptians said you had like, let's say, a ba and a ka and an ak and all these things that they describe, these layers of, of the complexities of your spiritual being that you're made up of. But your soul is a sum total of your embodiment. The colors and the color, the the way that you are, that th this is what the Bible and other groups call your robes of righteousness. So depending on how advanced this soul that you have is and its experiences here, that what you've gone through, you might be a professional at this. You might be so good at this. You might be a very, very advanced that you just zip to the end of the other end of the experience. Wow. Wow. But that for is the, incredible. But, yes, but for the most part, what's going to happen? is that you're going to go through a 360-degree panoramic life review. It's going to be holographic. You're going to see everything you've ever done in your life. You're going to experience it as everyone you've ever encountered. And you're going to feel a ripple effect of your actions. If you've been very good to people and you've been smiling at them, been kind to them, been showing appreciation and niceness, well, every one of those little acts, there's something as small as smiling at a stranger on the street, as Betty Eady so eloquently pointed out in her book, you know, when we look at Embraced by the Light or Daniel Brinkley and Saved by the Light yeah. and all these great stories, Don Piper's 90 Minutes in Heaven, all of them talked about this. But when you do the life review, and, and you're only going to you're only gonna do a life review, by the way. The NDE is always telling me, you only do the life review if there's a chance you're not coming back. If there's a chance that this is it and it's really, really close that you're not supposed to come back, well, then you'll do the life review. So you do the life review, and when you experience this, you're, you're experiencing it as every person you've ever encountered. You're experiencing it uh, as you're watching it. You're also fully immersed into it. It's like you're standing beside yourself, and there's no one there to get you in trouble for these things. If you've been a real bully or a jerk or a, just an awful, evil person, I mean, the person that's going to suffer the most is you having to go through that agonizing thing. That's why we have haunted houses on Earth. We have haunted houses that might be haunted for three or 400 years on our time, an old castle. It might seem like a long time to us. It's only a second on the spirit side. But the whole time, the person that's going through this, relaying their life, they actually really don't want to move beyond that because they're they're afraid to go do the life review. Uh, and there's nothing that we really get in trouble for, but sometimes it can be very difficult or, or traumatizing or difficult to go through this life review. But after we all get to come through it on the other side and you know, continue on our lessons and, and continue on. But the thing with this life review that you go through is that you're aware of everything there. You're aware of every hair in your inside your nose or on your body. You're aware of every particle of dust in the room, every light refraction and smell and taste and thing in the room. Every breath you take is a different oscillation of this beautiful unfolding of this multidimensional holofractal experience that transforms us on such a beautiful level. Wow, that is... That's incredible, I tell you. It, uh, it it's just kind of mind boggling, isn't it? If you don't know, you study it and that, but people that don't study it and and they hear it, it's kind of wow. How can that happen? But I know it is true. And you know, I've I've talked to people who too said that they went through a tunnel, and then they saw their relatives. And one one person said uh, her the angel came to her. She said, "I'm lost. I don't know where I am." And the angel just looked at her and pointed in that path to take. And she took it and she woke up and the doctor said, we lost you for a little while. Uh, so she re she went through that. So there's so many people with actual having things happen like that, aren't there? Different things, you know? Oh, uh, it always is like that. Yes. You know, this is, isn't that the truth? I mean, we go, we all go through these experiences in life and we're always getting signs actually. You know, the universe is always guiding us. It's giving us a roadmap. It's giving us signs. And, you know, you you don't realize how often you're being guided. You might have some sort of anomalous light in a photograph you think is an accident. But you might find if you look on closer in closer inspection, you could have, let's say, a, a pair of angel wings or something that's significant to you that you're getting signs, you're getting guided. You know, that's the greatest message that we can look at with all of these things when we study this is that no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter hard or how hard or difficult or how alone you might feel, you've got to remember that, you know, you're never alone. And there are incredibly powerful beings that are not only with you and around you and 
that are that are on this journey with you. And you know, you always have guidance coming in different ways, whether it's a thought that might pop into your head that's a repetitive thought that feels like this glimmer of hope, or you might have, you know, someone that comes on your path that's that's giving you a message or wants to help you. You know, there's always a lot more help than we think is there if we go for it. That is so true. And sometimes too, you look at a picture I did the other day of a lady I had helped uh, 30 years ago, and I thought about her, and I thought, I wish I could give her a call, but I can't remember her last name. And would you believe three days later she phoned and says, I don't think you'll remember me. It's been 30 years, but, you know, my name is Shirley. And I was so happy to hear it, but it was, I think that she must have picked up my thinking, wouldn't she? Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, we're so connected to people. We're more connected than we'll ever know. And that goes back to what we were talking about with this, not only quantum entanglement with this entanglement of people, but, you know, the people that we focus on or think on and, and look for, you know, we, we're drawing them into us. We're, we're constantly attracting and drawing these experiences in very quickly. And, you know, I've looked a lot at different cases with telepathy even. Uh, telepathy has been studied very seriously. There's a, a, a doctor uh, named Jeffrey Mishlov over at Stanford, and he's very seriously looked at telepathy and telekinesis and these sort of things, and he's studied them from a, a very real perspective. And, you know, this stuff does happen. You know, people do get messages. And how often have any of us had this experience, you know, where we've been thinking about someone and all of a sudden the phone rings, it was them, or we run into them at the super, the supermarket, or, yeah. you know, we might see them when we're walking down the street. We are connected in more ways than we will ever know. and once people realize who we are and who they are, how powerful they are, you know, there's infinite and unlimited potential and where we are going to go. And that's why this time that we're in right now is so pivotal, this understanding of, of this amazing gift of life we have and where we're going. Yes. Oh, yes. It is, and it's something that the world has never experienced before, have they? Not to this depth and where we're headed. It's a, a very interesting realization and awakening. We, there's a number of factors. When we go back into studying something called media ecology. So media ecology is very interesting. When you look at it uh, from people who study semiotics and communication and university, we look at various inventions that have changed us. So we look at things like the alphabet. We look at the telephone. We look at the mirror. We look at, you know, look where the Internet has taken us now. The Internet with communication, we now have an abundance of information at our fingertips. We have these smartphones. And now where we're going is uh, we're going to have ways of upgrading our, our, our brains and learning. And we're just moving at a very, very fast speed now. And so now our awareness of ourselves is growing. And there's a number of factors that are coming into play now that are bringing us in, as a whole into this new superposition and this new perspective of consciousness that is now making us more aware of ourselves. It's sort of like that biblical story of the Garden of Eden where they, you know, with the biting of the apple and becoming aware of themselves, you know, biting of the fruit, uh, whether that was a pomegranate or the, the, tree of no, the tree of knowledge. So we're coming into this new perspective. And so it's so very, very important now that we embrace these ideals of, of tolerance, of kindness, of love, of generosity, uh, of wanting to go into that in ourselves. And again, how can we shift the world? Well, why not use spark words? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> and and they, anybody can buy that book. If, uh, and it's on uh, Amazon, too. And it's called Spark Word. Um, I remember, forget the rest of it, but a short approach to affirmations. It's like a short form affirmation, Johnny, you know. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. But you know, um there's gonna we're gonna witness a lot of changes in the world for the coming year. And even in the this coming decade, you're gonna witness a lot of changes. I truly believe that, you know, leading up to even the year twenty twenty four, people will not recognize the world from the place they used to know it. The changes that we're going to witness are going to be shocking for some. And this also includes the weather patterns that we're going to have. And this has a lot to do with what we call our spatial coordinates to where we are moving in space. We're going to notice stranger and stranger weather, especially in America. 
and we're going to notice rising waters in the oceans, various changes that are are going to transform some places so in the in the decades to come. Uh, we're going to notice places that you know are going to become colder, uh, and others will become much warmer with the polar vortex is shifting. This is a shift in not only the Earth's fields and where we're going, uh, but this has been predicted since the ancient times. I mean, right now in the Egyptian predictions of where we're headed in these cycles, we're we're now in the return of the Kepler cycle, and there's a renewal that happens on the planet. And and at the beginning of this cycle, as we're going in the ancient Egyptian scriptures, <clears throat> there is a, a, a losing the old things that no longer serve us and letting go of those, and there's a new awakening that takes place. So it's an exciting time. And if we can look at it that way, it's fantastic. Um, we'll be uh, taking a short break, and we'll be right back after the short break with more with my special guest, Johnny Enoch. So we'll be right back. When was the last time you read a book that has created a profound impact on your life? This book is touching deep into the hearts of readers worldwide and empowering people with new hope to conquer over a life of despair, loneliness, and sadness. This book is called Affirmations, Your Passport to Happiness by Dr. Anne-Marie Evers. In this book, you'll learn the power of affirmations, creating visualization, goal setting, positive thinking, self-esteem, learn how to attract the perfect, lasting, successful career, relationship, and have optimal health. To order your copy, log on to www.affirmations-doctor.com or email Evers at shore.ca and get your Passport to Happiness. Affirmations, your Passport to Happiness, the book that's giving people positive control over their lives once again. Welcome back to the Dr. Anne Marie Evers Show where dreams really can and do come true. And I've said that uh, every time I do shows for the last 16 years, so I'm really, it's in my head, and I know they do come true when properly done. So welcome back to, uh, with our show and Johnny Enoch. And I know the time is flying, and we're not going to be able to cover everything, but I find what you're saying is very interesting, and I'm kind of wondering about other changes. Will there be changes in the finance situation and things like that? Yes, there's going to be a lot of changes that you can expect, not only from the way we interact with each other, the way that we travel will be changed, the way that we go to work, how we interact with people. The financial system is going to change in the coming years. It's going to be more of one that in some ways will be dependent uh, on, you know, not only the way that our world is transforming right now, but there's going to be ways that it is going to bring money to almost everybody and, and so that they can, you know, survive in society in a certain way and, and operate, but it's going to be different. It's going to transform. And this is something that we see the writing on the wall with right now. And the, the way we can look at these things right now as they're transforming is that we can choose to be upset about changes. We can choose to say, okay, this thing is happening this way over here, and it's, you know, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want the world to go down this, this, this road over here, and I want to hold on to what I used to have, you know. There's that way of looking at it, and then there's another way we can say, well, that we are an infinite consciousness, we're spiritual beings, we are here for a reason, and we're here to grow and evolve, and you know, we got to look at that. If we go back to what our, our Greek philosophers and the Neoplatonic thinkers like Heraclitus said, that the only, thing, the only thing constant is change. Change is the only unchangeless thing. So there's always change going on in the world. But as these things happen in the world, we should never give in to fear. We should never give in to panic or paranoia or, or worry. You know, obviously, since the beginning of the infancy of time, there's been people upset about politics. There's been people upset about the the way things you know change and transpire in the world but we're here to do great things we're here to evolve we're here to take our role in what we're going to do in space and go beyond that and so no matter what happens 
we have to remember these these ideas of who we are and where we come from. And if we get too caught up in the news and what's happening in the world, or what's happening in on Wall Street, or what's happening in any of these places, we only have to go back into ourselves, go back into our center of our being, into our heart, into go back into nature. And you know, we get these answers about who we are and where we're going. But I don't know how you feel about it, but I do believe that you know, no matter what happens. You know, if we have that knowing in ourselves, something good will come from it. Yes, I agree. And even if it looks hopeless, it's not hopeless. It'll turn out to be maybe a blessing in disguise. We don't know, do we? You know, that's it. And we all, we got to remember that we all agreed to be here. Going back into your question about the near-death experiences, you know, the one thing we learned from these experiences is that we all tend to create these things called life plans before we get here. And it doesn't matter if you go into what our life between life hypnotherapy sessions tell us to what Garnet's telling us to what our ND ears like Daniel tell us. We have these life plans that we make and we try to stay on track with them. We all make them. We all make mistakes as well. We don't, you know, we don't always hit all the markers on our life plans. And sometimes we've got to come back here and try to get it right. But the thing is, is that we make a life plan of things we'd like to do and so a lot of us, we all like to say, you know, why would anybody ever choose to come here? This place, Earth, why would you want to come here? There's so much pain and suffering and sometimes inequality. And there's there's things going on in the world that are so troubling sometimes when we think about them. And, you know, we, we think, you know, how would we ever solve all the problems in the world? What would we do? How would we solve them? Uh, why would we ever want to come here? But the truth is, is that you chose to come here. And, you know, you came here and this was a very, really, uh, you know, very important time to come here during this pivotal time of humanity. You know, in many ways, you know, if we think about there's certain times on Earth when we went through great transitions. I mean, look at the Dark Ages. Look at the look at the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages on Earth. If we didn't have those periods, I mean, think of how far we could have gone already. We could have gone beyond this technological time we're in right now we could already been zipping around the stars dr Marie Evers could have been on different planets and other solar systems talking about you know you know using affirmations and, and gone there but already you know we're, we're just getting to this point now so we got to think to ourselves you know why did we choose to come at this time this 2021 what what's so important right now this is a very exciting time it's a very interesting time to be here it is yes and i think if we can look at it that way, it brings hope because some people think there's no hope, but I, I think they just need to hear people coming up like you explaining things and then it, it will um, sink into their mind and then they won't have that worry happening. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we like to think of ourselves as so advanced here. And what I, I want people to think about this is a, a little known Buddhist teaching that the earth is a school not a playground. And the truth is, is, yeah, well, here's the thing. Learning can be fun, but, you know, you have to sometimes go through uh, difficult lessons and use self-discipline and all that in your learning. And if you look at this, if you look at the earth where we are, as a great zoological experiment, that it's, it's one of the many schools out there. I want everybody to think about this for just a moment, just a little bit of perspective for everybody listening today. Did you know that just 10,000 light years from here, there's over 20 million solar systems? Oh, and I want, really? Yeah, and I want you all to know that it's very, very busy there. <laughs> and the that. other thing is, it is. And the other thing is, I want you all to think about this for perspective. In just our galaxy alone, our Milky Way galaxy, Okay, there's more planets in our galaxy than there are grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and just our galaxy. Oh. Think about the infinite life that is present in just our universe alone. And think of our universe as just a little bubble in a vast ocean full of interconnected universes. Think of the vastness, the infinitude. Uh, infinity to the power of infinity when we think about life and how complex this is and to this picture that's ever growing and ever evolving and how you're a great mechanism and a part of it we all are and how we're so vastly connected to the source the all and 
the most amazing thing about this is if you think about how we're just in our infancy stage in our development of who we are on this earth, this little rock floating through space. And so we think we're so important and we're so advanced. But really, this is just a very difficult classroom. And if you're here and all of you listening to this, you know, you're holding on. You're making it day by day. Don't ever give up. Keep your head up and keep going because this is an amazing thing that you could be here and that you could be able to evolve and share your love with someone else. That's so beautiful. Now, Johnny, how can people get in touch with you? They've been listening and saying, wow, I want more to hear more about this man. How can they reach you? Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate your kind words and also having me on this amazing program. If people want to find me, they can find me online at Johnny Enoch. That's on Facebook or social media. That's Johnny is J-O-N-N-Y-E-N-O-C-H. You can find me on Instagram as Esoteric Johnny, and that's Esoteric, then Johnny, J-O-N-N-Y. I have a website at www.metaphysicalsource.com, and, of course, I'm about to launch a brand-new website. But uh, I also want to tell people that we have many great things to look out for coming up. Not only am I on the show on the Travel Channel called the Alaska Triangle, but also I'm on Gaia TV on a number of shows. And I have some very exciting tours and shows coming up. If you guys are going out to check out conferences this year, you can catch me at Contact in the Desert. I have a talk I'm doing there. Uh, and we are also doing a workshop. I'm doing that with Susanna Lotus, as well as I'll be on a panel there. And we have a very, very exciting show. If any of you out there want to attend and you're going to be out in the month of June, please come out to Laughlin, Nevada. It's just outside of Las Vegas. It's called the UFO Megacon. You can look it up online, the UFO Mega Conference. For the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference, we got uh, speakers and scientists and researchers from all over the world coming. And Nevada just lifted the cap for uh, before it was only 250 people allowed to attend. Now there can be as many people as, as as you want. But of course, for those out there that are worried, there will be social distancing and masks and health checks at the hotel and all that great stuff that is normal these days. But on the other side of things. In the month of June, I also have a very exciting tour. I want to invite you all along. It's called the Return of the Kepler Cycle Tour in Egypt. It is an amazing tour. I am doing this tour with uh, my friend, uh, the famed Egyptologist, Mohammed Ibrahim, who is a, an amazing hieroglyphics expert and a master of the mysteries. And I'm also coming out there with Jay Widener. Uh, now, Jay Widener, many people might know, is uh, he was very influential in Gaia TV and in Hollywood and uh, many amazing works as an esotericist. Uh, he's going to be there uh, as well as uh, Jujana is going to be there as well. Uh, Jujana Lotus talking about archaeology, myself. We have also coming on there, uh, not only doing this beautiful tour, we have very exclusive permissions. We have a Nile cruise, the most beautiful temples. It's an amazing deal, a great price. And it is just an, a great time to go to Egypt right now. Tourism has opened back up there, and they've had such a great uh, post-pandemic response uh, that they they were very good about things. And you don't need a jab to go there currently. If you have had one, uh, you know, traveling is always easier, but you just need a test before you go. Uh, but going to Egypt, of course, right now, the fantastic thing is is that we will also have guest appearances from uh, our friend Daniel Brinkley talking about the Egyptian afterlife. We have Paul Elder talking about from the Monroe Institute talking about how you can remote view the ancient past, as well as we have a guest appearance by my friend Jordan Maxwell talking about uh, ancient symbolism in Egypt. So you don't want to miss this, the return of the Kepler Cycle Tour. And if you want to book for that, just look up Beauty Egypt Tours or returnofkeplercycle.com. That's K-E-P-H-E-R. And that's all they can find me. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. You've got a, a busy schedule, my friend. <laughs> well, Lots not as busy as yours. And, and, you know, I'm so happy to have you on the show. And the time is just flowing. You know, I, 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 I look at the clock and it's almost time. And I just want to, uh, you to uh, some, um, leaving, leave some words for the folks and so they can go away with something from you, Johnny. And you have about oh, five, uh, six minutes to say what you want to if, you can say whatever you want. I would love that. Well, thank you. And I want to 
again, show my gratitude and appreciation for you having me on your wonderful show. It's always such a oh, pleasure to be here. Such an honor I want to have every- you, Johnny. You're just a wonderful guest, and I appreciate you taking time. And believe me, I know how busy you are out of your busy schedule to visit with us today. So thank you again. Uh, well, I'm so grateful for you having me here, and it's so beautiful that I could, you know, hear hear what you do, and also get your books, and they've helped so many people. So it's a it's a great honor to be here, and I know everybody appreciates you so very much. Not only appreciates you, but also appreciates your wonderful producer Cameron. And I just hope everybody listening to this continues to like and subscribe and share your videos all over the web, and go on your website, and listen to all the beautiful and wonderful affirmations that have been put up there that are so easy to access. And that's what people really got to learn. If we can, we can give the people one thing to take away today is that all of you listening, you are such a, a beautiful, precious being who's loved beyond belief. You have an infinite consciousness. You're more powerful than you've ever known. You're more powerful than you've ever been told. If you knew who you were, you'd never doubt yourself again. And this reality that's all around you that's being decoded you know, you're decoding your reality, and it's coming at everybody in many, many different ways, okay? Again, I, I, want, I want everybody to know this. I want them to know this, that your reality you have is very complex. It's not what you think it is, okay? There's, you know, without getting too sciencey and complicated, there's something taking place that we talked about earlier where you're experiencing your past, your present, and your future right now. In, in simultaneity, all simultaneously. We call that quantum multiplicity, okay? So it's happening in quantum multiplicity. There's a superposition, as we call it, if you want to get scientific. So essentially, there are things that are happening in the future right now that are trying to go back and affect the past. There's things in the past that are trying to push forward and affect the future. So the now that you have right now, is actually relative to the past and the future. And you might say that this is like a Japanese sword maker that's continually putting edge after edge after edge after edge on things. You know, we've we've talked a lot about something called the Mandela effect. And I don't know if you've ever heard this term, but this is like when you look back at something in your life and you think to yourself, hey, you know, I was talking with my friend the other day and we, we thought we remembered this certain thing that was on a movie or a TV show or we used to remember something was a certain way. We liked it a lot better, but it seems now it's changed. When we go back, it seems it's completely different. Have you ever had that before? You look back and you thought something was a certain way. You remembered it a certain way. It's completely different than what you thought. I sure have. Yes. Many times. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, many, many years ago, about 15, 20 years ago, we talked about something called the Bible code. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. I think I have a a book. Isn't there a book on it? Yeah, exactly. We go back to these yeah, these mathematicians in Israel. Now, this was so complex, this code, that they were able to decode certain events and things like that. It was so complex. And we found now that we go back and some of those things have changed. So we look at now how complex the algorithm of reality is and how it changes and, and what's happening to us. And um, essentially, we are constantly changing this and nothing is written in stone. So you might say that you know, in if we look at this from a quantum theoretician perspective, that every second or every Planck second, that your reality is shifting and changing trillions and billions of times. Okay, so it's changing your your it's it's moving around. This is harmonizing towards this very unique frequency and vibration that you're holding. So that's where these affirmations work. These thoughts, the affirmations are they belong in your toolkit to transform, to focus, to accurately beam at this laser-like precision of where you want your reality to go. And there is a science to this, and that's why it's so important. I mean, look what you've given these people. You've given them the tools to not only cope, to become happier, to become healthier, to transform things. And it's so simple. Anyone can do it. And that's where I think we all need to look inside of ourselves because there is this eternal unfolding, this existence, like the Buddhists say, there's this, you know, when the when the self is, is going away and we're getting rid of the self, there's this eternal unfolding of existence, and that's where we can use these things. So wouldn't you say that everybody listening to this, if they just did some spark words, that they, how long would it take for them to get results? Yeah, uh, actually, 
sometimes immediately, I tell you. You just do it, and there it is. And sometimes it takes a little bit. It depends on what it is, I think, too, and how much faith you put into it, you know, like everything else. But um, anyway, we have about uh, two minutes left, Johnny, and this time it's just flown. I can't believe how fast it's gone. And also, um, I wanted to say, check out my website. It's uh, www.mynameannemarieevers.com. And there's a lot of uh, videos we have on there, too, about helping right now with with COVID and, like uh, Johnny said, Affirmation Life Tools. And I'm so happy to have you. And can you just give your uh, your website or something uh, so in case somebody missed it, Johnny, before we go? Absolutely. Again, my website is about to be updated and, and it's getting refreshed shortly, but it's www.metaphysicalsource.com. And if any of you out there wants to share one of your incredible stories or experiences, feel free to do that. And I always want to hear about them. You know, check out the videos, check out the work. But most importantly, make sure you like, subscribe, and share all the work that's done by Dr. Anne-Marie Evers and these wonderful, wonderful affirmations and videos and tools on her website, on her social media. I love you all and appreciate you so very much. Well, thank you, Johnny. You're so sweet. And I really appreciate that. And I say thank you for all the listeners. And uh, just keep on preaching and, and sending your message out because it's a message of hope. And that's what is sorely needed now. And we really, really need it. And I just know that there's this program, if you can listen to it again, you can. It'll, uh, I can uh, get a hold of some of them to send some of them out, the programs out, so people can listen to it over and over again, Johnny. So that would be good. So. We'll do that, and I want to say thank you for for coming and visiting with us. I always love my time spending, and uh, Cameron, thank you for always being so helpful and wonderful to me and keeping me going through thick and thin, and I appreciate it, and I want to say God bless to everyone, and we'll see you next time, and have a great day. And stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy. Okay, lots of love. Bye-bye, Johnny. Well, if you have a problem and you don't know where to go, just dial up the internet and listen to the show. Tune in to Dr. Evers, she'll lift your spirits high. Her affirmations lead you from the darkness to the light. Say thank you, thank you, thank you, believe with all your soul. When properly done, they always work for you, you know. Oh, just say an affirmation. Love, health, and abundance beginning to show. Oh, just say an affirmation. Show your gratitude and the blessings will flow. Oh, just say an affirmation. Love, health, and abundance beginning to show. Oh, just say an affirmation. Show your gratitude.